Okay, Najee, so despite the high winds and my air compressor dying on me, we did manage to do like a 23 to 26 pound pour here of aluminum. This is some of the aluminum um, heat sinks and stuff that you sent me. Turns out there was a lot of steel in that. A lot of steel. Like half that box was metal. I'll show you what I'm talking about here coming up. But uh, this is what we got. The cone mold's doing great. No warping at all. What's up, fellas? Doing an aluminum melt today. I'm just trying to get a bigger pour capacity out of this thing. The largest volume of metal I have available at the moment is aluminum. I have an oxygen tank here that's been cut and some fairly good channel. But uh, just for the sake of seeing what this thing can do and how fast it can do it, we're going to be making a big old pyramid cone of aluminum here. I just want to see how this cone mold handles the heat because it's going to be getting some material a lot hotter than that put into it. All right, fellas. We're also going to be testing an anti-pulse system or a pulsation dampener on this fuel system. See how pulsy this fuel is? That can cause instability in the combustors. So we don't want that. We want it to be a lot smoother than that. So we're going to try and put a pulsation dampener on here and see how well that works. Okay, so this is the pulsation dampener. It's basically just a little air pocket that's got a fairly good large surface area to it. So it's got some good piston force. You don't want a small needle tube on there. Because there's no back pressure on this, we're not going to get to see the, the full benefit. But as you can see, the pulsation has been drastically reduced. Now when the system's under pressure, it's even better because that little air pocket has a little bit of power to it. But because there's no back pressure, it's not quite as strong, so it can't even it out. But that looks pretty darn good to me. That's definitely going to give us a much stabler burn on those combustors, and that's what we're shooting for. All right, fellas, we're going to let this thing warm up a little bit here. It's been running for about five minutes or so. I'm going to go ahead and throw this oxygen tank in. I just wanted to let things warm up. It looks like we still got some air bubbles in the fuel line yet. It takes a while for things to normalize. We've only been running for about five minutes. It doesn't like being tipped up right away, I guess. So we're going to see how long it takes this thing to melt. And we'll see what we got. Get a stopwatch going here. Alright, I got a stopwatch going. This thing definitely melts pretty fast. It's some pretty thick material too. So, the inside isn't quite glowing red hot everywhere. Oh, there it goes. 14 seconds. We've already got a hole burnt through. Pretty incredible. Dripping metal in 14 seconds. I'd say that's pretty nice for something that big anyway. Not too shabby. So I'm just gonna start chucking stuff into this thing. I'm gonna try top loading and side loading. Definitely a little bit of off gassing there from the paint and stuff that was on that tank. A little bit of glue was on that tank too. But uh, for the most part, yeah, in just under a minute there. Top loading, it works okay. You just got to be careful you don't clog it. I do like the top load a little better. Side load ain't too bad. You can get some bigger pieces in that. I've got some huge pieces of channel that I end up shoving in here. Just massive chunks. But uh, it's doing a pretty good job. It definitely liquefies all the way down to the floor. There's no trouble with that at all. The thermal conduction of the metal sees to that for sure. Plus, I let the foundry heat up a little bit. So the floor of the foundry is still probably pretty hot. That was a huge piece of channel right there. All right, guys, the compressor died on me. I got to pour it. We're not ready, but there's nothing I can do about it. I'm probably going to get splattered with some molten metal here. This is not cool. I don't want a big slug of metal left inside of this thing. So we got to do what we can here. 
All right, so basically I looked over and this thing's spinning free will. So we lost a chuck key or something in there. We gotta do some repairs to the compressor. Very unfortunate. We did get a screaming large pour, but I've got this mess left to deal with. All right, guys, a quick pit stop and we're back in the game here. This is the second pour with that leftover little bit of stuff. I started seeing red hot pieces of steel in there. So I stopped. This thing is full of, of steel and iron. I didn't realize that. You see all that red hot material in there? I thought that was slag. There's still some in there. There's still some in there. All right, so it appears that those radio parts that I threw in here, those were not aluminum casings. These casings were all glowing red hot. Everything else was liquid except for these casing pieces. All right, so one way to see what is really going on here. Some people can even tell by the sparks what kind of metal it is. That ain't aluminum. Now, I received this stuff from a recycling plant in a bin full of what appeared to be mostly heat sinks. But it had a lot of non-aluminum stuff. This is some stuff that I just picked out off the top of my eye. I didn't want to throw any of this in there. But um, some of these large containers... They did look aluminum, and I had just assumed they were because they were in there with the heat sinks. So this is all basically steel. Okay, fellas, so at the end of the day, this is what we came up with. We got two pyramids of aluminum. This one is 3.75 pounds that is just over 1.5 kilograms this next one is still warm like six hours later even after a water bath i'm gonna have to set the camera down for this and we're looking at about 10 and a quarter kilograms there 22.5 pounds so, oh, I forgot about this clump right here that I chopped off of this. But uh, that's probably a negligible weight. Nonetheless, I'm going to try and acquire some more aluminum. I do have a bunch of cast iron that I could do to validate the 100-pound ingot pour capacity. But that's very dangerous, dumping that much iron. I don't have a mold, and uh, I'm waiting on some funds to be able to support experiments like that so that's down the road for the most part uh, that's still pretty incredible now we did this in about uh, I want to say 15 minutes or so maybe not even that long you seen how long it took to get that one piece started it was probably about 20 minutes after that I think when I finally shut it down things were already melted but I was kind of deceived by this material that was sent in the aluminum bin. There was a significant amount of this kind of material here. As you can see, this is aluminum, but this is not. That is steel. It's some kind of galvanized steel. Anodized, I don't know what you call that. But it's got a layer of something on it, nonetheless. And I threw like a huge pile of these things in there thinking they were aluminum, and that's what we seen in the trough or in the crucible. This is not aluminum. The aluminum does not have sparks. So that's what happened there. It's kind of unfortunate because we might have got a much larger pour. I think we had 36 pounds total when I weighed the material initially. 
This container was completely full when we started. That's how much oil it took to melt those two chunks of aluminum. Um, I ran it way longer than necessary because I was sitting there waiting for that metal to melt. And then I looked in there and noticed it was all red hot. And aluminum doesn't glow red hot in solid form. <laughs> so I immediately knew we had a problem. And uh, I kind of let it go for a little longer. I thought, well, maybe that's aluminum oxide. Maybe I've just ruined the whole batch because of too lean of a burn. But no, it's just a bunch of steel. <laughs> 